Okay. Delegate Lopez, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, last year in my district, several young students at Wakefield High School were harassed and racially targeted during a, a school football game. Wakefield team members were spat upon and racial, insult, uh, racial slurs were hurled at them by members of the opposing team, causing a fight to break out that led to the suspension of the players on the Wakefield team who were the victims of the racial insults and being spat upon. This incident is not isolated. It's not an isolated event. Similar situations have broken out at schools across Virginia, including multiple attacks of this kind just at Arlington County High Schools alone and several in Fairfax. I think we can all agree that any kind of targeted racial harassment is wrong and without consent and without question has no place in our schools or at any school-sponsored activities. Every student deserves the right to participate in school sports without the threat of harassment, bullying, or racial attacks. No child should ever have the fear, uh, to fear the possibility of becoming the target of a racist slur, especially not at school. Even just one attack like this can have a devastating impact on students' mental health and self-esteem. With the rates of depression and suicide among teens skyrocketing across the country, we have a duty as lawmakers to do everything we can to, to promote a safe and welcoming environment for every student and for every student athlete. The Vir Virginia High School League VHSL handbook states that it's the, their mission to promote education, leadership, sportsmanship, character, and citizenship for all students through school sports and competitions. This mission is being stymied by the fact that VHS VHSL has not been able to require the training for all participants that they, they need to establish and follow enforcement standards. Throughout the year, I've worked with VHSL to remedy this issue and believe they have made strong progress towards securing a fair and safe experience for all participating students. We know that participating in athletics have major positive outcomes in physical and mental health, as well as the classroom, as classroom achievement. And to protect the right of all students to engage with school activities, we have to work to ensure that sports are truly safe and accessible for all students. We should protect the right of every child to safely access these opportunities and ensure that every student, in addition to the coaches, parents, and officials who supervise them, are made completely aware of what behavior will be tolerated and what will not. My bill, HB 844, requires that the VHSL develop rules and standards for the prevention of bullying or the use of racial slurs or insults during school-sponsored activities. Every member school of VHSL must abide by and implement the rules, standards, procedures, and penalties adopted. Each student and individual who coaches a high school sports team, whether paid or not, would be required to receive and review the developed training materials, including the reviewing, uh, re including the re re review of the penalties for the violation of the rules. Now, there's an enactment clause on this to January 1st of 2023. Now, this has been an issue in my community, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, for a long time, and it's not an isolated incident. These incident the, the incident I'm referring to was in USA Today. It was in the Washington Post. But this happens quite often. We've seen examples of <laughs> high school uh, basketball games where there's an ethnic community for one, uh, a, a pro predominant student population for one ethnic community and another ethnic community, and it can get pretty ugly. So this is simply calling on the VHSL to create the standards that should be followed and that each coach or student or school sponsor should be required to read and review. That's all this bill does. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anyone wishing to speak uh, virtually? Anyone out there in the virtual land? No? Anyone here? Uh, live and in person. All right, come on, sir. Yeah, you have been quiet, the virtual. Now it's after dinner, right? There we go. Mr. Welcome, Chairman, sir. members of the subcommittee, I'm Mark Hubbard, representing the Virginia High School League. Uh, we are aware of the situation. Uh, we have heard the call. The executive committee of the High School League has adopted policies so that training will be required of students, parents, and coaches. We have spent six months working on this. We are in the process of implementing this. This is going to happen. For that reason, we do not feel this legislation is necessary and we oppose the bill. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Let's move on, please, okay? Welcome again, ma'am. Mr. Chairman, Subcommittee, Vicki Kiss with the Virginia Education Association. We support this bill. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank Welcome you again, again, young man. Okay, Mr. go. Mr. Chairman, I've made my trip down I-95 worth it. Um, I'm speaking in favor of the bill. I attend the school that uh, the other school that Delegate Lopez mentioned. And really the reason there were no uh, remedies, no action taken after this event was because VHSL did not have the proper policies in place. And this legislation, as I understand it, would ensure that when these events do occur, that uh, they be dealt with in an appropriate manner. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Hearing none, fellow delegates, Mr. anyone Chairman? have a question? Delegate LaRock? I didn't mean to jump in, but I can see your questions in okay. a few. So I, I have a comment, if I may, before. That's okay with you, Delegate LaRock? Proceed, Mr. Chairman. Um, Delegate Lopez. High school principal for many, many years. I have before me here uh, the Virginia High School League Code of Sportsmanship, Code of Conduct. Are you familiar with this? Yes. Does it not address what you're saying? No, actually, not at all. As I mentioned in my comments, what you're doing there is it's, it's not providing the enforcement mechanisms necessary. If this was actually a just policy, if it was a just policy, well, then the victims of the racial slurs and the taunting and the being spat upon, those children would not have been suspended, as was required under the policy as under VHSL. Delegate Lopez, this seems to me it is a problem in your area. <laughs> this is a problem in every corner of the Commonwealth. I, I, I've not seen that in my area, sir. These code of conducts are, are explained to and for a basketball game or a football game, and if people avoid them, they are suspended, and number two, and they are not welcome to come back to the ball games. Mm -hmm. Is it a little, I'm asking the same question again. As a high school principal, this is already here. Is, is this a local problem is what I'm asking, this is specifically a, to your area? This is a national problem, as has been documented numerous times, in national media as well as local media all across the Commonwealth of Virginia. Well, again, I come from the Shenandoah Valley, and uh, I've not seen this kind of behavior, and where I have seen it, the school administration and the school board and everyone else has taken immediate action against it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I appreciate it. It sounds like to me you have an administrative problem out there with whoever is doing what they're doing. Well, if this was the case and there was really no issue, why would VHSL as it was just attested to, be working on a policy to address it. That baffles me because it's right here. It has, I'll tell you, the school administration should, the spectator expectations, the athlete expectations, and the coach expectations. Mm -hmm. They're clearly delineated here. I, 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 All I we're asking, Mr. Chairman, is yeah. that... I'm not being argumentative. I'm I understand. I'm reading I understand. what is there in, in... All I'm asking, Mr. Chairman, is that we ensure that one additional step is taken okay. where coaches and school sponsors are required to review the policies put forward by VHSL. And there's a, an enactment clause to January 1st of 2023 to allow for the final stages of this process to go forward. That's all we're asking. Okay. Uh, the gentleman from Loudon, Delegate LaRock. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A question for the patron. I. I feel like we're being inserted into a, an ongoing matter. If, if VS, VS was not present uh, and hadn't outlined what sounds like a very thorough and comprehensive um, set of policy revisions, am I correct? Um, How did you get a, I, I'm sorry, I apologize. No, no, not at all. No, uh, then I haven't seen them, but it, it, it sounds like they are intended to target uh, the need that you have outlined, and certainly it is a need. None of us uh, want to uh, sit idle uh, with things like that going on, but um, is it really necessary, this is kind of a rhetorical question, but um, is this something that would be better addressed perhaps next year if once these policies have been implemented uh, and put into practice, you found that they are lacking and that the uh, action is needed at that point? Uh, Mr. Chairman. I'd respond to the delegate that if I thought that, I would have not put the bill in. Fair, fair answer. Thank you. 
Uh, Delegate McGuire. Yes, sir. You have the floor, sir. Well, Delegate LaRock addressed many of my concerns. But I would say, again, you cannot legislate good behavior. It sounds like the high school league has policies as we've gone over. And so I would ask that we lay this on the table. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, to answer the question. To, yes, sir. To answer the question of, the, of Delegate McGuire. Yes, sir. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Of course you can't legislate good behavior. But right now there's a gap in DHSL's policies. We're trying to address the policies, not the good behavior. We're trying to make sure that the policies are moving in the right direction and that they fill this gap that is currently there. This is a problem that has been, been, a, been in, as a former high school athlete and college athlete in Virginia for high school. I can tell you this has been going on for a very long time and it's not addressed. And at least having the coaches and the school sponsored, the school sponsors of, of school activities be required to at least know what the rules are and to say that they've reviewed them should be the lowest of low hanging fruit. Very good, thank you. Delegate McGuire, I believe you had a motion. Motion to table. Is there a second? A second. Uh, motion to table. Let's see if the motion shall pass, please. Okay, the motion passes four to two. Thank you, Delegate Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 